Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. previous lecture we discussed about how aerodynamic forces namely lift and drag are produced on an aerofoil and we have defined what is lift and drag. So, let us consider an airfoil. So, when there is flow, so the orientation of this aerofoil with respect to flow is the angle of attack represented by alpha. And lift is a component of the force, resultant aerodynamic force which is acting perpendicular to free stream and say drag is a other component of this force acting along V infinity. And we have defined lift is equals to half rho V square plus C L, right. So, and at the same time we have also defined what, what is drag half rho V square yes C D. So, let us and this is 2D case. So, the corresponding lift coefficient and drag coefficient for this aerofoil is considered as 2D why because aerofoil is also known as infinite being it is a sectional property right. So, this lift and drag we are talking about is a uh, about a sectional property here is not it. So, the section here is a two dimensional section of the wing which is aerofoil also known as infinite wing or 2D wing right. So, if you look at the C L, C L 2 D, what we can write it as lift generated upon half rho dynamic pressure times the reference area. At the same time drag can be given by this expression, right. So, if you observe the C L, in the first place lift is a function of say density right rho infinity and velocity free stream velocity here and then size of the lifting surface as well as angle of attack and also dynamic viscosity as well as speed of sound right, where mu infinity is a dynamic viscosity of air we will just define it very soon. So, and F 2 let F 2 be the drag is a function of these same variables here right. So, for example, if I have to deal in terms of lift I need I need to if I have to understand the variation of lift, then I have to vary all these parameters and see how the lift is, how the corresponding lift variation is with respect to the density, with respect to V infinity, with respect to surface area, as well as angle of attack, dynamic viscosity and sound. So, there are yeah, speed of sound here. Yeah. So, there are quite a lot of variables. So, instead of dealing so many variables, what we do is, Let us talk in terms of this non-dimensional parameters, right. So, let us say this is a function of angle of attack, Reynolds number and Mach number, right. Similarly, drag coefficient is a function of angle of attack, Reynolds number and Mach number. So, whatever we are talking about this coefficients here, so the coefficients here we are talking about is two dimensional coefficients right. So, not for the entire aircraft you are talking about airfoil characters yeah non dimensional coefficients for airfoil here. Now, apart from reducing the workload let us say how to generate this C L with alpha in the first place right. How do we generally get lift variation with angle of attack? So, previously we looked at 
how CL varies with angle of attack, right? So, for example, this is for aerofoil and within the linear regime, we assumed a straight line equation, right? So, we can represent this variation of lift in the linear regime as CL naught plus lift curve slope, which is CL alpha times alpha, so 2D. Right. So, how have we generated this data? How have we got this information? By testing this airfoil in a wind tunnel, right? Wind tunnel is a setup, experimental setup where we can drive the air at the desired speeds and test our airfoil and place our airfoil inside the wind. So, which is equivalent to airfoil moving at the same velocity in the static air, right? So, we use that principle. So, we place airfoil inside that wind and try to measure the corresponding forces on acting on it, right? So, why do you want to deal in this with these parameters? One thing is, if I want to know about the lift and drag characteristics of a particular aircraft, then I have lift drag characteristics of aerofoil for that uh, matter, then I would like to, uh, then I have to vary all these parameters, say about six parameters. Say initially I have to keep density, reference area, alpha, and all other parameters constant and vary the velocity. At different velocity, what will be the corresponding variation of lift coefficient? And at the same time, I can keep velocity constant, rest of this parameter constant, I can vary the angle of attack here, right? And also for different, for example, if I am using the same cross section, but different, different wings of different size, let us say, right? Or say, how should I compare? Let us say, if I, if I am using different aerofoil here, so, the lift char lifting characteristics of the aerofoil will be far different, right? So, and it changes with shape as well, right? So, in order to decouple this or in order to reduce the number of variables as well as the complexity, we try to deal in terms of non-dimensional coefficients here. So, so let us consider a small example where uh, a Boeing, a Dreamliner is flying at an altitude of 30,000 feet which is approximately 10 kilometers, right? So, moving at a velocity of 0.8 Mach number, right? So, first of all, let us define this Reynolds number, where Reynolds number is equals to inertial forces upon upon viscous forces, right? So, this viscous forces viscous force is equals to, so this shear stress times the corresponding area, reference area, right, times the area. And inertial force is due to rate of change of linear momentum. Right? So, if you solve this, what you have Reynolds number as rho V L, where capital, so rho V L upon mu infinity, right, where mu is the dynamic viscosity So, for air it is at 18 degrees Celsius, it is about 1.789 times 10 raise to the power of minus 5 Newton second upon meter square, right? And then L is the characteristic length. So, when you talk about a aerofoil, you can consider the characteristic length to be the chord of the aerofoil, which is the length of chord line. Right? And similarly, the Mach number here, M is Mach number. So, Mach number is defined as velocity of flight vehicle upon velocity of sound, where A infinity is the velocity of sound, which is square root of gamma RT, right? Where gamma is a ratio of specific heats. 
which is 1.44 air, right? And then R is the universal gas constant, and T is the temperature, corresponding temperature, ambient temperature. So, so this talks about how fast we are moving when comparison to time, uh, when comparison to sound, speed of sound here, right? So, if you are moving at a Mach number which is less than 0 0.3, we call it as low subsonic speed. So, this is like negligible compressibility effects. So, when you talk about, when you are moving anything less than 0 0.8 Mach number and in between 0 0.3 Mach number. So, this particular flow, this particular velocity corresponds to a higher subsonic Mach number, higher subsonic speed, which is where the flow is dominated by compressibility effects. So, if you are flying in between the 0.8 and 1.3, this particular regime is known as transonic flight regime or transonic speeds. Right. And the flow is, e if the Mach number is equal to 0 0.1, uh, sorry, 1, so that means you are flying at sonic speed. So, effectively you are flying at velocity of sound. So, you will cover about say close, in a, close to 1200 kilometers per an hour, right. So, five is supersonic. So, the flow is mainly dominated by shocks, right, shock waves. And then, so the Mach number which is greater than phi is hypersonic speed, right. So, where the concepts about rarefied gas dynamics will come into the picture, okay. So, yeah. Now, coming back to this uh, discussion. So, we now want to look into this non-dimensional aerodynamic parameters, which indeed a function of this non-dimensional variables, right. So, here Reynolds number is rho v L by mu is a non-dimensional uh, variable and then Mach number is a non-dimensional variable here. So, instead of handling six variables to find out the forces, we can able to find out their force coefficients with three variables. So, apart from that, I will just get back to that example what we were discussing. So, we have considered an Airbus dream, uh, sorry, Boeing dream, Dreamliner, right, 7879 or 8, whatever. So, it is flying at an altitude of 10,000, 30,000 feet, which is approximately 10 kilometers, right. So, and it is flying at a Mach number of 0.8. Now, now, whatever the lift that is experienced by that aircraft. So, in the first place, how can we allow that aircraft to fly, right. Can you dare to allow it to fly in the, uh, in, uh, in, uh, like straight away after manufacturing? So, you not, you first have to simulate that conditions, isn't it? Simulate on ground. So, how do you simulate so those conditions? Similar conditions is by performing wind tunnel test. So, as I discussed, wind tunnel is an experimental setup where you can place your scaled down models, or place your models, right, inside the test section, where test section is the place where you actually test, measure the data from the model, right, that, that it experiences uh, from the wind. And the tunnel is uh, equipped with a fan which runs the air at a desired speed, right. So, fan will basically try to throw air at a desired speed. So, 
So I may not be drawing it to, to the scale, right? So, and then you have some filtering chambers, right? And then there will be a, so say there is a honeycomb structure, it's not an obstruction here, right? So this there can, there is something called honeycomb structure to streamline the flow, right? And then there will be a convergent cone or convergent chamber, right? Followed by this, we will have a settling chamber where the flow now tries to settle in this particular chamber. So, chamber, convergent chamber, right? And then you have, yeah, you have the test section, right? So, this is where we generally place our models. And perform the testing. So, let us say this is the test section. So, followed by it, the, you will have a diverging, diverging chamber, right. Okay, fine. So, this particular uh, setup runs the air at desired speed, okay. Now, this motor will try, we can vary the RPM of this, so that the air inside will run at different forward velocities, that is with the aircraft phases, right. So, so now, how should I generate this two dimensional data here, right. So, what can I do is, let us say this is my like a side, side wall of this test section, one side vertical wall and then let us assume this is the vertical wall on the other side. So, this is my front face and this is my back face, right. So, now let us consider an aerofoil. and extrude this aerofoil what you have is a wing right now so extrude this aerofoil till the other face of this test section okay so what what happens by uh, by doing that is the flow anyways we know that it is always parallel to the test section here inside the wind tunnel right the flow will remain always parallel to the test section here. So, so this is how the wind tunnel will be. Right. So, okay. Now, what I can do is if I take a, but a plane, right, which is in between these two, uh, which is exactly the midway of this pan of this uh, airfoil, right. And if I can tap, if I can put holes on the surface and then tap the corresponding pressure at each and every location, right, I will be able to measure the pressure distribution over an airfoil at a given location, right, is not it? Because so, I have extended uh, extended this aerofoil uh, till the ends of this test section, you know, walls of, ends of the walls of this test section. Now, so, effect, what I am trying to do is, for, with respect to flow, it is like a continuous body, it is an infinite body, right. The flow happens within this confined regime, which is 
uh, inside the test section, right? So till the ends of the walls, we have uh, we have covered it with the aerofoil, with the aerofoils, n number of aerofoils you can assume. So there is an aerofoil here as well. So this particular, you can imagine this as an extrusion of this particular uh, airfoil. Say this. Say if this is not to the scale, then I can reduce it a bit, right? So everywhere we have airfoil sections, right? So in the midway of this uh, length, at the midpoint of this length, let's take a vertical plane, and in that plane, let's make holes on the surface of this object. Right. So by tapping the pressure from the surface of this object, I'll be able to find out pressure distribution across this airfoil on the top and bottom surface. By integrating that, I'll be able to figure out what is lift and what is drag. Okay. Now that is how we get lift and drag. Now coming back to our example again. So if I have to test the wind test this dream layer inside a wind tunnel, will I be able to do it? So I need, I need such a big test section, right? So for an aerofoil, we can definitely do it. But what about a dreamliner, uh, dreamliner? Can I bring it and place it inside the test section? That may not be a feasible idea, isn't it? So instead, what, I, what, uh, what can I think of is reduce it, scale it down, scale it down the dimensions, and then bring it into the test section and perform the required test, right? So in doing so, can I generate the same lift? Right? Why? Because if I have to generate same lift, for example, the one which is flying at 10,000 meter, uh, 10, 10 kilometers, right? So it experiences certain lift, why? Right? Based upon its surface and the velocity of flight and the corresponding ambient conditions there, right? So can I get the same force, gen, uh, what do you call, duplicated inside the wind tunnel? Right? So that may be a bit difficult task, very difficult task. Instead. What I can do is, I can find out what is the CL lifting characteristics at that particular uh, lift, li, uh, non dimensional lift coefficient at that particular flight conditions. And if I can simulate the same conditions here, like if I can measure the same CL by simulating the same Reynolds number, what the aircraft is actually facing, and then the same Mach number, what the aircraft is facing in the real time. If I can simulate both Reynolds number and Mach number on a scaled down model, right? what actually the aircraft is facing, isn't it, or going through. So if I can simulate the similar conditions, then I will be able to get the same lift coefficient for the actual flight as well as scaled down model inside the wind tunnel. So this similarity is known of flows is known as dynamic similarity, right. So if I can do the dynamic similarity, then if I can achieve such condition, dynamic similarity condition, then I will be able to attain the same C CL value as that of free flight value, right? Actual flight test value, same. Yes, of course, you have to maintain the same angle of attack, right? In, even inside the wind tunnel, you need to maintain the same angle of. So, but how do you get angle of, how do you vary angle of attack here? For example, if I have a rod coming out of this aerofoil, and I connect that rod to a motor, stepper motor here, right? Whose ang uh, like the angle of stepper motor, I can control it, right? If say there is a shaft, so say there is a shaft running throughout, no? Throughout this uh, throughout this aerofoil, and the shaft is out here if the shaft is out. Say if I can rotate this shaft, this is outside the test section again, right? So if I can rotate this shaft, I will be able to rotate the airfoil altogether, right? The entire wing, wing, the section that we are using here. So and then, yeah, by rotating so, I am trying to change the orientation of this object with respect to the free stream velocity. Here in our case, we call it as angle of attack. Right. So, for at different angles, I, if I can rotate it and hold it at different angles and take the corresponding pressure readings from the pressure tapping there. So, I will be able to figure out what is the pressure distribution at that particular angle of attack and then I can find out what is the corresponding lift and drag, right? lift and drag coefficients at that particular angle of attack. So, by varying the angle of attack, I will be able to generate, a generate the data 
right. So, for different alpha, so I am, I will change from alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, so on. I will be able to generate pressure on upper and lower surface, right, pressure on upper surface, pressure on lower surface. I know, physically I know the location of these ports, right. I will be able to get pressure data from each port and I will be able to integrate them to figure out what is the lift coefficient as well as drag coefficient, right. So, C L 1, C L 2 corresponds to alpha 2, right, so on, okay. That is how I will be able to generate C L versus alpha graph. So, so that is the advantage if you can deal in terms of non-dimensional force coefficients here, which are aerodynamic force coefficients, which are lift coefficient and drag coefficient, you will be able to achieve this uh, same characteristics as that of real flight at a very less expensive and yeah at in terms of both time and money right as well as your efforts okay so the main aim of uh, the uh, designer wind tunnel designer is to achieve this dynamic similarity right we the, he wants to so the ideal wind tunnel is is the one which can generate the required Reynolds number as the as well as Mach number together, but in reality it is very difficult. So, the aim of wind tunnel testing will be either or the design uh, is guided by either uh, with an aim to achieve either one of these parameters, right, either the Reynolds desired Reynolds number or desired Mach number. That is why in general this wind tunnel tests are performed in multiple wind tunnels. So, the same model is tested in multiple wind tunnels where one wind tunnel can generate your desired Reynolds number, the other one can generate the desired Mach number and see how the characteristics of this. Okay, yeah. average? Not average. You want to know its variation with Reynolds number and Mach number. Why do you take average there? Right? It's it's independent, isn't it? These two. So let's get back to this figure again where We know when there is flow. So, there is lift and drag, right. So, if I consider any arbitrary point on this, so this flow will try because of this lift and drag or because of the lift majorly will try to produce a moment as well, right. So, this aerodynamic forces will also produce a moment. Apart, when there is flow, apart from the aerodynamic forces, there is also called aerodynamic moment here, right. So, let us consider one such moment called pitching moment. Very soon we will discuss about what are all the degrees of freedom, what an aircraft have or a rigid body in space have and then we will define this uh, yeah, nomenclature in detail, right, pitching moment. Let us say it is defined by M, where if the aerofoil, due to this moment, if the aerofoil increases its angle of attack, it faces a higher angle of attack, right. It will rotate in a direction which increases the angle of attack. Then we call it as positive, right. So, alpha increase, if it is in the increasing direction of angle of attack, then we will call it as this pitching moment is positive pitching moment, which is also known as no sub, right. So, if the moment reduces the angle of attack, we will call negative angle of but a negative pitching moment or pitch down moment, okay, pitch down of this aerofoil. So, this is the convention that we have adopted, right. Now, let us assume, yeah, so, M, le, yeah, first let us define this pitching moment, which is the dynamic pressure times or Q infinity time, Q infinity times reference area uh, will help us with the, so this quantity corresponds to the force, aerodynamic force, right, times the reference length here gives you the moment here. So, multiplied by this is a non-dimensional moment coefficient, right, where C bar is mean aerodynamic chord. So, we will discuss about this C bar when we talk about the wing plan form geometry. 
and CM is non-dimensional or pitching moment coefficient which is non-dimensional similar to that of CD and CL. Em, you can assume it's, it is also a function of alpha, Reynolds number and Mach number. Understanding the Cm is also very important right? in order to characterize a particular aerofoil as well as aircraft. Right? Now, let us say this moment about a point here, let us write a moment about a point, arbitrary point here is equals to moment, let us talk about this moment which is independent of lift, right. So, independent, let that be m bar, right, m prime c, m prime is independent of lift plus some factor times lift. So, this factor depends upon moment reference point, let us say, okay. So, so in non-dimensional form or say right, in non-dimensional form what I can mention this as is, so this is half rho v square s c bar times c m is equals to half rho v square s c bar times c m prime plus zeta times half rho v square s times C L. Yes, this is 2 D again, right. So, C L 2 D. So, until I mention uh, this as an aircraft or wing, this is always corresponds to 2 D case, right. So, uh, I, ideally I might have used the small case letter of L, but I am used to this capital L 2 D. So, that is the reason why I am continuing. So, if let us say if I miss some place at some place, you kindly consider this as a 2D, 2D case. Even CM is again the 2D case here we are talking about. So, CM is equals to CM prime plus some factor zeta times CL 2D, right. So, zeta prime upon those variables will be say zeta. So, where CM prime is pitching moment, when C L is 0, ok. We will see whether such such thing exist or uh, or not, you know? and then what is the significance of the C M prime. And say zeta be the, be an empirical constant that depends upon moment reference point. Now, so what is the C m prime? What do you mean by that? What is the significance of the C m prime? So, let us say we, we said this is when pitching, uh, when lift is 0, right. Am I correct or not? So, we have discussed about symmetric as well as cambered aerofoils earlier, is not it? So, for a symmetric aerofoil, when lift is 0 for a symmetric aerofoil? When angle of attack is 0, right? At 0 angle of attack. So, what happens at 0 angle of attack for a symmetric aerofoil? Why lift is 0? Right? We said, if you remember, so this is how the variation is, right? For CL and alpha. So, at alpha is 0. C L is also 0 here, right. What do you mean C L is 0? Lift is 0, right. So, when can you achieve such condition? What do you think is happening? 
what do you think is happening? When can we have such condition? Lift is zero. So again, yeah, you can simply say that when the body is not moving, right? But here we said at angle of attack zero, which means so we are defining an orientation with respect to flow. That means the body is moving, right? It is moving ahead. So the this is v infinity. So there is flow, but still there is zero lift. When that can happen? So we know that there is pressure distribution when there is flow across this aerofoil, there is pressure distribution on top and bottom surface. So the pressure distribution on the top surface may result in a So this pressure distribution of top surface, just forget about the bottom face right now. So let us talk about only this pressure distribution on top surface. So what happens here? So, so there will be a resultant pressure on the top surface or there will be a resultant force because of this pressure distribution acting on this top surface, is not it? Top surface alone, right. So say it may act at a, at the centroid of this distribution maybe, so that can be an that can be an easy guess, right? It may be acting at the centroid of this pressure distribution on the top surface, right? If there is an equal force that is acting in the opposite direction, right? So if there is an equal force which is acting on the, so there is a pressure distribution on the bottom face as well and then, so there will be a point about which there is a resultant force acting, is not it? Right. So, let us say this resultant force is acting at the centroid on the top face, right. So, this is the resultant force because of the pressure. At the same time, if these two forces and there is a resultant force on the bottom side, so if the magnitude of these two forces are equal, right, then lift is 0. That is when C L is 0 here. Am I correct or not? So, there is equal and opposite forces acting. So, again, airfoil is a rigid body. So, for a rigid body, if I apply, if I, if I am lifting this body with certain force F acting at this point, right, I am lifting this body. That means, there is some force acting on this. So, the same force acts on each and every particle that is rigidly attached with this body, right. So, entire body will experience. So, similarly, I am just transferring the force that may be acting on the surface just to onto the cord line here, right. Similarly, the bottom the, uh, the resultant force acting on the bottom face is also transferred to the cord line here, right. Now, when the top and bottom forces are equal for a symmetric aerofoil, it happens that, so these two act at the same point, right. So, when lift is 0, when these two are acting at the same point, that means there is no moment as well. So, this moment when lift is 0 for a symmetric aerofoil is 0. Right. So, in case of cambered aerofoil, you have what what should be the condition? When can be lift when lift is zero for a cambered aerofoil? Yes, you have to. So, for a cambered aerofoil, so I need to orient it a negative angle of attack, alpha at which C L is 0 is negative, right. This is alpha, this is C L. So, this is my negative angle of attack at which I have to orient my aerofoil, this cambered aerofoil with respect to flow, so that zero. lift is 0. But in that case, what happens is, this is that alpha at which C L is equals to 0. So, though the lift distribution, the, 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 the pressure distribution on the top and bottom, they are e equal in magnitude, but may not be acting at the same point, right. They may be acting at, at an offset point, 
Right? So for a cambered aerofoil, because of which there is a pure couple, it's an independent of moment reference point here. Right? It's like a pure couple. Right? So it is generally less than zero for a cambered aerofoil, positively cambered aerofoil. So let's get back to this equation. If you can, uh, yeah, we now are clear with what is CM prime, right? It is moment when lift independent of lift here, right? And is equals to zero for symmetric aerofoil, and also discuss that it is negative for cambered aerofoil, right? So what about this zeta? So let's consider a moment reference point towards uh, close to the leading edge here, right? So you know when there is at certain angle of attack, uh, right, there is some lift already acting on this as well as drag, right. And because of this lift and, and also now we are in a position to represent what is this moment in, okay, let us not do that for the time being, right. So because of this, when you change the angle of attack, right, so when you change this angle of attack, the reason, so let, let us say that angle of attack is change is positive and there will be an incremental lift here, right, acting. So this incremental lift will try to produce a pitch down moment, right. So this is negative, why? Because th there will be an increase in angle of attack here. So let us say if I increase this angle of attack, alpha plus delta alpha, right. So because of which there is an increase in lift, right, Incre there is an incremental lift that incremental lift will try, will produce a pitch down moment here, right. So if this negative moment, isn't it? So the contribution of lift towards this moment is negative, that means this particular factor is the moment factor, right, isn't it? So this particular factor has to be negative, which forces zeta has to be neg negative, right. In that case, so if I consider, so moment reference point, so at leading edge, so this forces, so when, okay, so when there is an incremental alpha, like, right, so alpha is positive, so CL will be positive, right, so which implies CL will also increase, this increase in CL will produce negative moment, right. So how this is possible? Only, so this, since, so this condition forces zeta has to, this implies zeta has to be less than zero, right. Let us consider this moment reference point at the trailing edge, right. Let us say we shift our focus to this trailing edge right now. And with respect to that point, so the, any change in the lift, right, positive change in angle of attack will produce lift. So that lift will try to give a pitch up moment, isn't it? That, that gives a positive value of CM here, isn't it? So this CL, this particular term contributes for a positive value, which means that zeta has to be positive. So zeta has to be greater than zero, right? So if you look at this, so zeta again depends upon moment reference point. So the, if the moment reference point is changing, the value of the z this particular empirical constant is changing, right? And it is changing from negative to positive. So for a particular location on this chord line, this zeta value can be zero, isn't it? Am I correct or not? When it is changing from negative to positive, this zeta can also be zero here. So for certain location on this chord line here, right? So that particular location is known as aerodynamic center, right? So what, what does it mean? So CM now becomes CM prime, right, which is independent of when zeta is zero, there is no change in CL. That means even if you change angle of attack, CL will change, but it will not affect the overall pitching moment about that particular point. So that particular point is known as aerodynamic center. So let us define it. So aerodynamic center Let us define aerodynamic center. So this plays a crucial, so AC 
see right so this plays a cru crucial role throughout the throughout our uh, flight dynamic analysis as well as in the coming course as well So, pushing moment remains constant with angle of attack, right? Or we can say independent of alpha, right? Independent of angle of attack, which means change in pitching moment with respect to alpha is. 0 about that point, right. So, that is for the airfoil. So, we call the corresponding moment about that particular point is CMAC is pitching moment about aerodynamic center, which is nothing but our CM prime here, right. We have our previous equation, which is uh, CM is equals to CM prime plus zeta times CL. So, that is nothing but our aerodynamic center here, fine. So, how do you find this aerodynamic center? Given C L C D, so this C L again two dimensional C D two dimensional, which is C capital C D times right, that is that is one and the same here, right. And C M about a point. So, given C L C D C M about a point, we will be able to find aerodynamic center. Right. So, what do you mean by that? Let us consider an aerofoil is at an angle of attack alpha. So, let us say with respect to point O, right, I know what is C L, C D and C M, right. So, and say there is an aerodynamic center A C, right, let the positive x A C is positive behind this O, point O, right. So, let us say the offset between aerodynamic center and O is x A C, right. So, since as I told earlier, if I know lift drag at a point, these are forces I can translate on to the aerodynamic center as well, lift and drag here, right, as well as there is certain moment about this aerodynamic center that we got to know. So, for moment about aerodynamic center for a symmetric aerofoil is 0 here, so which we witnessed earlier, right. So, and is negative for cambered aerofoil, positively cambered and is positive for reflex aerofoil, okay. Okay, so let let us write moment about O is equals to moment about aerodynamic center, right, plus C x A C times minus, sorry, minus because this lift contributes, uh, will uh, contribute for a negative moment here, pitch down moment. So, times the lift acting here, right. So, so this C m is equals to C m A c minus x bar A c times C l, where x bar is equals to x bar A c is equals to x A c upon C bar, right. So, what is the definition of this uh, aerodynamic center? So, 
dcm upon d alpha is equals to 0. So, alpha when there is a variation in alpha, there is a variation in Cl as well, right. So, this Cl is again a function of angle of attack here. So, what I can do is instead of alpha, what I will say is dc upon dcl, right. So, Cl with, so we know CMAC is independent of Cl. So, this turns out to be 0, right. And what I have is minus x bar AC. So, I can find out the location with respect to that point, right, is equals to minus dcm upon dcl, right. So, if I know the lift curve slope of this, sorry, cm cl curve slope, if I know dcm upon dcl, right, it is a pitching moment and lift coefficient curve slope, right. If I know that within the linear regime, I will be able to find out what is x bar AC. So, if dcm upon dcl is negative, let us say if the slope is negative, that means x a c is positive, which positive is aft, that means the aerodynamic center lies aft the moment reference point, right. So, if this is positive, then this is negative, that means the aerodynamic center lies ahead of the moment reference point, okay. If I know the data of pitching moment c m, c l, c d with alpha at a given point, right if I variation with at a given point, then I will be able to figure out what is the corresponding. At least I need two data points there to figure out the slope, I need at least three to four data points, is not it? Two minimum and then for accuracy higher number of data points. So, within the linear regime, why because we are writing this equation for the linear regime here. So, what I have is here x a c is equals to minus d c m upon d c l, okay. Now, let us discuss about one more interesting right reference point. So, have you uh, ever wondered where these forces are acting, aerodynamic forces are acting, right. So, there is some point called or refer reference point called center of pressure, right. So, let us say x c p, its location is represented by x c p, right. This is the location on airfoil on say close to cord line, right, about which resultant forces act, right. So, so that means there is no moment about that particular point, pitching moment is 0, right. So, how to find the relation between this x c p and x a c? So, let us see a c and is represented by x a c, right. So, and then this way, this is c p represented by x c p. So, how to find the relationship between them? Let us consider an airfoil right. So, when there is flow, if it is oriented at certain angle of attack, so there will be lift and drag, right. Let us say this is my moment reference point O, okay. So, this is my moment reference point O and let A c be the aerodynamic center with respect to this O, this A c is at a location x A c, right. Location x A c and then let us say there is center of pressure. So, about aerodynamic center, what can we expect? Moment about aerodynamic center and then lift, is not it? lift acting perpendicular to v infinity, right. And then at center of pressure, lift and drag of course, right. So, at about center of pressure, what we have is same magnitude of lift because it is a rigid body again, 
lift and drag, but there will not be any moment about this x c p, right. So, if I write pitching moment equation about point O, so the moment m is equals to moment about a c plus x a c times the corresponding lift minus, I am sorry, it is a pitch down moment, right, minus. This is equals to, so the moment due to, so the same moment I can achieve by considering forces acting at x c p, right. So, that is equals to minus lift or x c p times lift acting here, right. Okay. Neglecting the drag components which are very small. So, for the for this discussion we are not considering them. So, this this talks about the same moment, right. So, because moment about O with respect to A C and with respect to C P. So, from here what I can do is x bar C P is equals to x bar A C minus of C M A C upon C L, right. Of course, this is 2 D. C M A C upon C L 2 D, right. So, this is the relation between aerodynamic center and center of pressure. So, so what happens as the angle of attack increases? The C L value increases here. If the C L value increases, so this is not going to change with the angle of attack of course. So, the C L value is increasing, why? Because the C L alpha you times alpha that is how you modeled it right C L naught plus C L alpha times alpha. So, in the linear regime this is approaching when it approaches high angle of attack there is a higher value of C L before stall right. This makes this quantity this particular ratio smaller that means, so x C P is trying to move close to this x aerodynamic center. So, let us say for cambered aerofoil C M A C is negative right positively cambered aerofoil that means x C P lies after the aerodynamic center because this particular quantity is positive. So, x C P is behind x A C otherwise x bar C P is greater than x bar A C for cambered aerofoil. So, it is equals to 0 this particular quantity for a symmetric aerofoil right this particular ratio is 0 because C M A C is 0. So, in that case x C P and x A C coincides. So, and at high C at alpha yes alpha approaches alpha stall higher C L. So, C L approaches C L max right which means x C P approaches x A C right. So, we will see why it is. So, the typical variation of lift coefficient with angle of attack right for an airfoil here. So, this is 2 d again. So, this is where alpha at which C L is equals to 0 right. So, it in this linear regime of angle of attack or say at low angles of attack. So, you have an airfoil right, you have a flow. So, the pressure distribution is the flow is completely attached. So, you have pressure distribution mostly you no know, most of the part for the most of the part the flow is attached. So, you will have larger pressure distribution is not it. That means, the centroid is not more or less equals to the center of pressure here you will have center of pressure almost like close to this centroid which is distributed throughout the aerofoil right. But at the higher higher angles of attack what happens? The same aerofoil now placed at higher angle of attack right. So, what happens is so, there is a flow separation right. 
isn't it? So that means the flow, the pressure distribution is mainly concentrated near the region where there is attached flow here. That means the centroid of this has moved, for, moved forward compared to the centroid for the previous case, which is this one, right? That means the center of pressure is moving forward, right? Close to this center of pressure, right? So, sorry, aerodynamic center, close to aerodynamic center. The center of pressure is shifting towards the aerodynamic center. So, let's now look at wing planform geometry. Let us consider the top view of an aircraft, right? Say this is my fuselage where I have a vertical tail in the top view here. So, so the wing, right? We are talking about wing here. Say So this is the center line of the fuselage and it is symmetric about this particular center line, okay. So this is called the wing, leading edge of the wing, trailing edge of the wing. We have trailing edge of wing, right, and what we have is if you take a cross section here, we will have a airfoil, right? And the airfoil, the characteristic length of airfoil is called here, right? So, what we call it as, it is towards the root here, right? Root of this particular wing. What we call it is root call, CR, right? And we call this as tip, root and tip. What we have is root cord and tip cord which is C T. So, the cord near the tip is tip cord and the cord near the root is root cord. It makes sense here. And let us define the span of this wing, which is the distance between the two tips here, right? Let it be B. And the reference platform, reference area of this wing is denoted by S, right? S be the CR is called root cord, CT is called tip cord, S is a reference platform area. Right? And B is a span of wing measured between tips, two tips here, right? And let us look at some of the non-dimensional parameters here that talks about the geometry, right? Again, when we non-dimensionalize them, it will be helpful for us to compare aircrafts of different sizes, right? So, the first non-dimensional parameter we will introduce here is aspect ratio, which is B square by S. How long your wings are, how, how, about, how big your wings are, right? Higher the aspect ratio, higher is your wing span. So, for a rectangular wing, this will be B upon C. Why? Because S is equals to B times C for a rectangular wing. So, let me do it this way. So, for a rectangular wing, The aspect ratio is B upon C and lambda is called taper ratio. This is called aspect ratio. So, higher is the aspect ratio, longer is, longer is, is the length of your wing, larger is the length of your wing, right? So, lambda is equals to CT upon CR, right? So, for a rectangular wing, lambda is equals to 1 and is equals to 0 for triangular wing, 
right? If it is a so this is for delta. We call it as delta wing. Right? It's a pure for a pure delta wing. The taper ratio is zero. And then, so this chord at tip and root are different, isn't it? So there can be a mean, there will be definitely a mean location for this chord, is known as mean aerodynamic chord, right? Which is known as C bar, right? So C bar for a rectangular tapered wings. So it is two third C R times one plus lambda plus lambda square upon one plus lambda. So for a rectangular wing, so lambda is equals to one, what you have is C bar is equals to C R or C T. Both same, right? For a rectangular wing. And then the corresponding Y location of this M A C M A C is known as mean aerodynamic chord. Right, so this this is called C bar, which is known as MAC. So y of this MAC is d by six upon one plus two lambda upon one plus lambda. So these are some of the geometric parameters of this wing plan form. So let's look at what are what are the aerodynamic characteristics of this finite wings. So till now we are talking about infinite wings, which is aerofoils. So will there be any difference between this finite wings and infinite wings? We will look at this during our next lecture. Right.